The St. Paul's area is home to the region's highest concentration of public housing, according to the city of Norfolk. It spans over 200 acres. 98% of the people who live there are minorities. Of about 4,500 residents, about half are children. St. Paul's is made up of three neighborhoods, Calvert Square, Young Terrace, and Tidewater Gardens. The city has been vocal over the years about the plan to revitalize the area, turning it into a mixed income desirable place to live with new housing, parks, and retail. Tidewater Gardens was slated for demolition first. News 3 was there back in April for the groundbreaking. After the story aired, we got an email from the city asking us to clarify that, quote, this redevelopment project does not include Young Terrace or Calvert Square. So News 3 started asking questions about whether the grand plan to revitalize all three neighborhoods had changed. The Tidewater project alone, we're probably going to spend over $300 million in the redevelopment of that, that single community. Young and Calvert would be similar. It takes time, a lot of planning, and a lot of effort in order to put that together. And right now, the city says there is no master plan or timeline to make that happen at Young Terrace or Calvert Square. I think Tidewater Gardens, once we sort of got into doing the implementation of it, in the middle of a pandemic sort of was like, oh, okay, this is gonna take um, a little longer or, or you know, a, a little more intensive than perhaps that we thought. They say the initial talks about Tidewater Gardens started in 2005, but the recession and then the pandemic caused delays. Tidewater Gardens is scheduled to be completed by 2025. They say that's key to moving forward and that's the focus at this point. There's not a, a you know, a secondary effort right now where we're looking and in, in starting the effort with Young and Calvert yet, because again, that's a lot of planning work and we're just not there yet. News 3 asked why there has been confusion about the project. Well, I think part of that, and, and no offense to the media, but part of that is the media keeps saying Young and Calvert, Young and Calvert, Young and Calvert, and the focus should be on Tidewater. But city leaders also admit issues with their communication. So I think part of it is the message that's gone out. Some of that's our fault, you know, with the, the authority in the city and our, and our communications of, of everything. Um, we certainly have an aspiration that yes, we would, we want to see those communities redeveloped. What we want residents to know is, please don't be nervous that tomorrow you're going to receive a notice that you have to move in Young and Calvert, right? There will be lots of communication, lots of community meetings in the same way that we did with, with Tidewater Gardens. The project will likely need more money, grants and funding to be able to move forward for the other two neighborhoods. The city says they're excited to move away from concentrated poverty that's not managed by private housing. But for the folks who live there, there's no telling when that will happen. They're no longer having to go live in the park, you know, a public housing community. They get to live in, in, in a place of their choice. I think that, that is, that's the story, is that you're really giving the real opportunity to these families that, that they don't have um, living in Young and Calvert. You know, they don't have the real choice of living in a really good place. The city tells us the Norfolk Redevelopment Housing Authority will continue to work with the Young Terrace and Calvert Square communities to address issues that each community faces. They say that there will be a lot of community engagement before anything happens. Meaning, for now, people in those communities will have to wait.